Hi, and welcome back to the Nitpicks podcast. This is Stacy, as usual. I am the content IP and outreach director at Nitpicks. I mainly work with the collections and outside folks that I write to about Nitpicks. And I'm here with Lee. Hi, Lee. Hi, I'm Lee. I'm the Nitpicks books and patterns graphic designer. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> my that's, intro, more my in- <laughs> simple than yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm. You know, one day maybe I'll actually be able to describe what I do because it's kind <laughs> of all over the place. But I, I keep trying every week. I'm like, maybe this will be the week when I actually spit out what I do. But <laughs> anyway, we do the podcast. That's what's important right now. So, how have you <laughs> yeah. been, Lee? Uh, pretty good. I've been knitting a bit. I'm knitting a bit for work. I'm working on some more patterns, some free patterns that'll be coming out like pretty soon. By the time you're hearing this, I think it's going to be pretty soon. So, um, Yay. yeah, we'll, we'll include a link in the show notes to like all of our free patterns sorted by newest. And then you can look at the newest and maybe they'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to do it. So, yeah, I've been working on work projects, too. I just finished one, actually, and then um, I finished it, and I was so happy because last week I was talking about all my unfinished projects, and I finished one. So when I finished it, I'm like, yay, I can can cast on for another project. Mm -hmm. So I did. (laughs) Um, That's how it works. Yeah, I just have, so I have this twill that I bought during, uh, I think, last year's cyber sale. I've been wanting to use it. I think I mentioned this last week, but I want to do the, I'm sure I'm butchering the name, the Ventasica, uh slipover. It's from Unparalleled. It's by Kristen Jankuk. Um, I love it. I cast on for it. I've done a couple inches, and yeah, I really, really love it. There's a lot of TV right now, so it was like, I don't want to watch TV and knit on this. I was watching uh, Sanditon last night, if anyone cares. so. <laughs> well, speaking of casting on new projects when you have no business casting on new projects, not, not that you do, you can, you can cast on whatever new projects you want. I have, I have no business casting on new projects, but I had this idea a few days ago and like, on, on the last podcast, Regan was talking about like getting an idea in his head and and he has to do it. And like I'm like that mm-hmm. too. I totally related to that. Um, I got this idea in my head of making a blanket that's using the book that I made that 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 came out about six years ago. Now it's called uh, Color Squared. It's like a coloring slash puzzle book of like pixel art. So it's all <laughs> this like pixelated pictures and i had this idea of of knitting the pixels basically in a blanket and uh as soon as i thought about it i was like oh i really want to do that because when the book came out i actually uh, cross-stitched one of the images and that worked really well and that was the only like kind of fibery repurposing i had done and i had kind of wanted to do more fibery repurposing like at the time but i was in school so i was really busy so i didn't have time to and now i'm like well i still don't have time but i (laughs) i can i could do whatever i want with my time now i'm not in school anymore (laughs) so uh yeah so basically i want to knit a blanket that's like a pixel art and i haven't decided what picture to use i might do like headphones or record player or cassette tapes something musical Yeah, because it's a the book is um it's all like kind of vintagey inspired um objects kind of. I I went to um to make the book. I went to like a thousand or dozens of uh like antique <laughs> stores and thrift stores just looking for like old <laughs> objects and like took pictures of them and then turned the pictures into pixel art. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. So I think I'm gonna play with that idea this weekend even though <laughs> i should be knitting on my sweater i think i'm gonna do that instead because i'm excited about it <laughs> i'm excited about it too i can't wait to see it i love the <laughs> idea of like of the objects you're talking about too like a cassette tape or a record that would be so cute yeah. although it makes me feel very old vintage cassettes no. are vintage <laughs> i mean they are <laughs> so, they, yeah. they're old no they're vintage <laughs> it's just funny um yeah. Anyway. No, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. It's so, funny. Um, like, w- something from, like, elementary school is, like, I totally acknowledge that it's vintage. But then if something is from, like, college and someone talks about it like it's vintage, I'm like, oh, that's from when I was an adult already. And then it, <laughs> yep. then it makes me feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I know. Oh, time. time. The passing yeah. of time. <laughs> I just, I'm like feeling like my mom when I would talk about when I was a kid, like the stuff from like, say, the 50s or something and how cool and old it is. And like my mm-hmm. mom just getting all upset and like, yeah, uh, yeah, mom, <laughs> I, I, I know what you feel now. Ha- happens to us all eventually. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's not go down that path any longer. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's my uh, not my current project, but soon to be perhaps. Well, next time you hear us talk, I'll say if I if I actually went down the path of of like casting on and actually starting it. We'll see. We'll see if happens. And if it's never brought up again, that means it didn't work. <laughs> just, just forget you ever heard it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a really fun uh, program today because we are going to do a roundtable about socks. And this ties in nicely because we have a sock sale going on. Mm -hmm. Sock yarn forever. (laughs) I'm excited. All the sock yarn. Never have enough. No. (laughs) No. And, you know, it's a saying that's been going around the knitting community for many years now that sock yarn doesn't count as stash. So... I I have very little stash by that by that measure, and hardly any at all. <laughs> well, could you just say whatever your most used yarn is doesn't count as? Because for me, it would be like worsted doesn't count as stash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my <laughs> like that much sock yarn. <laughs> yeah, I have so much hawthorn, and people keep giving me hawthorn too. Like at work, it's something did, like a color didn't work right, and like, oh, Stacy likes Hawthorne. Let's use it. Let's give it to her. So I have like a pile, a pile on my desk for a while, and I'm like, and under my desk too, or leftovers <laughs> from projects I kept because it's Hawthorne. So, um, yeah. but yeah, so we're gonna ha- we have a sock yarn going on. Um, it starts on, uh, it started on April nineteenth, and it goes until May second. So. Uh, yeah, get your sock yarn. And this also includes really exciting Felici color, say Felici sale. So mm-hmm. cool. We have a couple generations of Felici that we still have <laughs> in stock. Uh, we, you know, we used to like, uh, have one at a time, but we've kind of like kept some of the older ones around. So basically, if you want one of the newer colors, it'll be 30% off. But if you want one of the older colors, it'll be 50% off. So Definitely check out that Felici page. I love mixing and matching different colors. So pick a couple that look nice together and then stripe them back and forth with each other. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. I, I recommend doing that. It's always really fun. I love like anything. It looks it looks so different. Like our, every project looks so different depending on um, even if you're using the same two colors to, to stripe together, it still will look completely different from project to project. So that's really cool. And I could say that because I'm watching Lee using two different fleecy colors and striping them right now as we're t- <laughs> as we're recording. So yeah, I'll give a little spoiler at one of the free patterns that may or may not be out when you're hearing this. Um, it's actually more than two colors. It's this is my my stash busty sample to show you <laughs> how um this is a pattern that you will probably be able to see now. Anyway, the point of it, the point of this sample is that you can take all the little tiny balls that you have left over from all your sock knitting and you can use them all together in a wild every color project but we i'm also made another sample that's only one color so it doesn't have to be like that just if if you like every color in one project like i do <laughs> that's an option that you can have oh uh, yes <laughs> i definitely need that because i have so many sock scraps but so yeah so check out the sock yarn sale and to get you ready for it we are going to have a whole big long conversation with our friends jen and elena um about socks so stay tuned we've got a special treat for you our listeners Use the promo code PODCAST23 at checkout to save 20% on your next order. It's limited to one use per customer, and the offer is valid through April 31st, 2024, and standard terms and conditions apply. If you're listening to this episode the week it airs, use the code to save even more on our sock yarn sale. That's promo code PODCAST23, all one word, for 20% off.
And we're back. This is producer Andy, who will be moderating a sock knitting roundtable. I've gathered up Lee and Stacy, of course, and joining us are Jen and Elena, the sort of more passionate sock knitters of the Knit Picks team. <laughs> um, do you guys want to go around and introduce yourself and your sock knitting background? Maybe we could start with Lee. Uh, Yeah, so you know me, I'm Lee. I uh, don't have a lot of a sock knitting background. I never really knit socks until I started working at Knit Picks. Um, Probably about three years ago is when I first started knitting socks, when I realized I could hold sock yarn double to make like a worsted weight and knit socks that way. So um, that's what I like to do because I don't like knitting fingering weight on small needles. It hurts my hands and I don't enjoy it. And knitting should make you happy and you should enjoy it. So (laughs) that's what I do. (laughs) let's go to stacy next i'm stacy um you if you listen to the podcast you already know me so (laughs) um i guess i'm the sock knitter uh, it feels like i'm always the sock knitter of the company i have been knitting socks for goodness it's like 18 years now it was one of the first projects I ever started. Um, I was living in Boston and or living outside of Boston, and I took a two-hour commute each day, and I knit socks on them. So I love socks. I don't even rare. I rarely wear anything but hand knit socks. So yeah, I've been knitting a long time. <laughs> Elena. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Elena. Um. As my sock knitting background, as a baby knitter when I was in high school, socks were the first pattern kind of project that I went in with no idea what I was doing. (laughs) I could knit, I could purl, and I thought I could go in the round, um, but that's where I learned how to use double-pointed needles, what short rows are. Um, They turned out gigantic, but they're one of those fun older projects where you kind of look back and see how far you've come. And Jen. Yeah. I'm Jen, and I've been sock obsessed for 10, 13 something years. Um, ever since the first time I tried socks, I don't know why I got obsessed with them, but I did. And I decided that they're the perfect travel project. And so I have a bag in my um, with a pair of socks in my car and in my bag. And anytime I go somewhere where you're unexpectedly uh, waiting for whatever reason, um, I know that I have emergency knitting, as I like to call it. And I've always got a sock project with me so that I've got something to work on. Smart. Yeah. I... Oh, and I own one pair of hand knit socks by me, <laughs> but everybody I know has hand knit socks by me. Wow. I can never part with mine. <laughs> I've never given away a pair of socks. They're all for me. <laughs> Although I've only knit like four socks ever. So it's not, it's not Last year, I knit socks for my entire family. And I started wow. way back in the spring. And for the holidays, everybody got hand knit socks last year. How many was that? Oh I think I did six. Wow. Oh and they were all out of electric <laughs> slide, our sock collection from last year. That was fun. Okay, no one tell my partner because I've only knit him like three pairs of socks, and that was like ten years ago. I did actually. (laughs) I knit my partner a pair of socks, except I never finished them because they were they're the um the type of afterthought heel where you don't put in the scrap yarn. You just like figure out where the heel's going to be when they're finished because I didn't know where to put the heel, so I did that kind. So you cut open the heel, and I just. Like, I'm afraid to do that part. I just haven't done... Like, so the socks are done. They just don't have heels. <laughs> I have never done those socks. They sound scary. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fine <laughs> when I do it. I just, like, I haven't <laughs> taken the step to, like, figure out how to do it. You know? Does everyone have strong feelings about, like, heel types? I I almost always do a heel flap. Um... The one thing I always do on my socks, because I generally just use do plain stocking net socks anyway. Um, sometimes I'll go crazy and do other ones. But usually I do a heel flap. And I always do, um, I always slip the pearl stitches rather than slipping the nip stitches when doing um, the heel flap. That's one of my big things. Because I'm like, it makes it go quicker. So I also slip the pearl stitches on a heel flap. Um, but I have a my own created two by two boring plain rib sock that I make 
obsessively. Um, and I make them at the same time because I still won't make the same sock, even though I keep making the same pair. <laughs> I still won't make the second sock. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, I, I was just curious, Jen sucked. Uh, is it two by two rib, like the whole way or just the cuff? So um, because I do them two at a time, I've now set up, I, I have my knitting perfected. And so um, it's the entire leg is the rib. And then the top of the foot, I keep okay. the rib. And then I do stocking out on the bottom. Nice. But I've set it up so that it starts and ends with a pearl. Mm-hmm. And then I do both my heels at the same time and my heel turn at the same nice. time. And so I completely make the whole sock. Cool. I like that look where it's like ribs all down the front like that. I was going to say, I don't have strong feelings about a heel type, but I have very strong feelings about doing two at a time. Because <laughs> yeah, same. second sock syndrome is real. And when you it, do them two at a time, it feels like you're working on one project. It tricks your brain, and then you have an mm-hmm. actual pair of socks when you, quote, finish your project. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have to do two at a time. I, in fact, I was thinking about this earlier. Um, the last time I knit a single sock by itself was when I was testing a new sock yarn. This was a couple of years ago. I can't remember even remember what the yarn was. But I did one whole sock, and I'm like, oh, it's so cute. I will definitely, and it mo- went so fast. I'm like, oh, I can totally do another one. I've never done another one. <laughs> it's still a single sock. It was hanging. I remember it was hanging in my cubicle um, when back uh, pre-pandemic before we had a new office renovation. And I took it home. And I'm like, okay, I'm really going to do it. I have the yarn. I'm going to redo it. No, I still haven't. I just do two at a time. Yeah. So I knit my first ever pair of socks probably about four years ago. And that was one at a time. I did one and then the next. And they were worsted. And then I cast on my second pair one at a time. And I got like halfway through the first one and then I like really wanted to try two at a time. So I cast on like another, like a third pair, two at a time. And then that, that original second pair, like I've never finished it. I've only (laughs) ever done two at a time. Uh, Yeah. So totally same. And I also don't have a strong preference about heel type, but I think I've only ever done heel flaps. So I've, I can't say I don't like short row heels or after thought heels because I haven't actually done them, but I do want to try. I've done a few of them. I don't mind the uh, short row heels or ap- even I've done a couple afterthought heels. I just, I don't know. I think because I do like, like Jen was saying how she has her basic pattern like memorized. I do as well. So I just kind of just do the same thing every time. So mm-hmm. yeah, I've used the same pattern for the last three pairs I've knit, but I want to branch out for my next pair. Well, I have some suggestions for you. Lee. We have a whole range of patterns. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll be hard to find a pattern. It'll just be the choosing which one is going to be the hard part. <laughs> I was going to ask if there's like preferences between DPNs or Magic Loop, but it sounds like if we're all knitting two at a time, you end up on circulars. You know, yep. it's funny though because I still do. Um, I do a combination of mag- of Magic Loop. But I also use the, this is an odd thing I do, is I do use DPNs for my heel. Um, I actually just, I've just always done, I do heels like kind of one at a time. Unlike Jen, I do them one like one at a time. And I use DPNs for them. I I just always done it. It's like the most comfortable thing for me. And it doesn't, it means my um, my cords aren't getting all tangled or anything. So I just go back and forth with the, the DPNs. Yeah, I can see how that would, that would be. A nice way to do it. Maybe I'll try that next time. I'm trying to keep DPNs around, you know? (laughs) I feel like they're losing popularity. (laughs) Does anyone do two at a time? I mean, do use two circulars? No, I just do Magic Loop for two at a time. Magic Loop, yeah. I've I've tried the two circ, and for whatever reason, my brain can't make it work. Same. And I always end up with both sides on one needle, which is not the desired outcome. <laughs> I have the same problem. I try. I remember when I first started, uh, when I switched from DPNs to using circulars for socks, I tried to, um, two circs. Could not figure it out. Magic Loop just came much more naturally to me, so I've just stuck with it, so... It's also fun to tell people that you have a magic skill. Like, it's a magic loop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
I feel like whenever knitters like learn magic glue for the first time, they're like, "Oh, that's it." I thought it was going to be like more more magical somehow. Like it's very simple. It really yeah. should shouldn't have that name. You know, it should just be called like loop method or something. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not scary, but it's also not really magic. But <laughs> it looks it looks it's magic to, to outside. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, sounds like a classic heel slap is the most popular. But what about direction? Do you have direction preferences? Toe up or cuff down? I think some of us have strong yeah. preferences. <laughs> I have very strong preferences for top down. I think Lee and I were kind of was it was it you and me Lee fighting about it on well fighting quote unquote on the podcast about it. Yeah. I'm very passionate I mean, about my I top can, down. I can take the the toe up side of the debate or whatever because that's <laughs> that's what I normally tend to do. I do prefer toe up for the basic reason that I like to use up as much of my yarn as possible and not risk running out and not have a bunch of leftovers. So if I do toe up, I can knit right up until the last of the skein and um, not have a lot of leftovers. And I like my socks to be kind of as long as possible. Um, well, not like uh, <laughs> as l- not actually as long as possible with the limited amount of yarn that I have. Because right? like, have you been legs, in... so. <laughs> yeah, I guess knitting thigh high socks. Yeah, no, no, not not going to be doing that. But um, yeah, so that's that's why I do toe up. I also prefer toe up because um. The setup, I find, is easier for getting them two at a time in Magic Loop. You use um, Judy's Magic Cast On um, and just go, as opposed to trying to rearrange stitches and stuff to get set up. And I've edited patterns in the past that were cuffed down just to do them toe up so that I could have that really easy setup. (laughs) I love the... um... Judy's Magic Cast On, it creates a really nice toe. And so um, I don't feel really strongly one way or the other. And I, some socks, the pattern is better toe up. So that's nice. Um, my only problem with toe up socks is I've never per, uh, perfected any of the loose um, bind Same, offs. same, so even Jen. Jenny's <laughs> super stretchy. It just looks so messy. And I'm, I'm so particular, even though I know it's underneath your cuff. Um, and I, I have a nicer, um, cast on that's super stretchy. So I just, yeah, I keep saying I need to, to work on my Jenny super stretchy bind off to make it look nicer so that I, I can do more toe up. Cause there are socks that look better toe up. Um, but then I keep making the same boring two by two ribs. So, you know, <laughs> I totally yeah. get that. The last pair I made, my bind off is too tight and they're really hard to get <laughs> off and on. Um, what I need to, what I want to do for my next pair is do one by one rib and then do a tubular bind off because I love how a tubular bind off looks and it's stretchy and it's great. It's, the problem is I always, I don't do one by one rib. I do on this last pair, I think I did one by three rib or a lot of times I do two by two rib for the cuff. And then I get to the bind off and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to have to just do a a normal stretchy bind off because I can't do tubular. Um, Maybe you can modify a tubular to be other kinds of rib. I've tried to do it before and it's been really difficult. So if anyone has tips on that. um, Yeah, that's I totally get that reason. Yeah, that's the same. It's the exact same reason why I do like I do. I have knit toe up socks, but every single one of my quote unquote stretchy bind off is somewhat stretchy, but I can feel it when I'm pulling it on. It's not too tight where I can't put on my socks, but it's enough where I feel it when I'm pulling on my socks and it bugs me. So I just stick with my top down, my very passionate top down. And it does get, it is like Elena said, it is a little fiddly to get it going, but I've kind of gotten used to it now. So. So getting that cast on on the cuff is like the be- the biggest benefit of doing a uh, cuff down, you would say? Probably, um, at least for me. And also, I just, I don't know, I think it just feels more natural to me. I mean, I've just, and then it just, I just do a lot of top down socks. <laughs> so it just, it's more automatic than anything, especially when it comes to the heel and like the gusset increases and all of that. It just makes more sense in my head doing it top down. But I agree, Stacey. And I'm going to say something controversial. Uh-oh. 
but I like the Kitchener stitch. Oh, I do too. Oh, me too. I love Kitchener. I, <laughs> I, I love Kitchener too. Grafting. Yay. Yay. Yeah, yeah no, I really love Kitchener. We all have people upset. <laughs> so, Selena, the only one in the non-love for grafting. Oh, I also I are. dislike it, but no, it's oh, not. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's not that I dislike it. I can tolerate it up to a point, but once I get past that, you know, critical mass of annoyance it's like <laughs> somebody else do this for me <laughs> yeah oh i actually did it for andy once in the yes. office <laughs> yeah i was like oh i love i love doing that i'll do it yeah <laughs> and i was gonna say not sock but kitchener related when we did the game day cardi and we did the the tubular bind off on the ribbing I realized that I could Kitchener that. And so I actually put it on two needles and Kitchener stitched it rather than do a traditional tubular bind off with one needle. It's basically it the same easier thing. For me. It's just, yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. I can, I can understand like you're doing the same thing, but if it's on two needles, it's like a little quicker and more natural than doing it on one and needle. Yeah. It worked better for my brain for whatever reason. I yeah. kept getting confused about what I was doing and I was like, Oh, it's Kitchener stitch. I can do yeah. this. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I totally get that because tubular bind off, like it takes me a while to kind of get into the rhythm of it. It it doesn't come as quickly. Yeah, cool. I, I never thought of doing that before. So when you make your next game day, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll bring I, up another. You and I know where to go for all of our kitchener needs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say another contr- controversial like opinion i really love wrap and turn short short rows so that's something i use in my socks when i'm turning the heel i know a lot of people are been using german um row or german short rows but i love my wrap and turns so yeah i'm a big german short row head personally same (laughs) yeah i just couldn't i just for some reason i tried doing it speaking of game day i tried doing it on the game day cardigan um at the shoulders and i just couldn't for some reason, I guess I have to practice more because I could not figure it out. And then I'm just like, but I like doing wrap and turns. So I'm going to keep yeah, with my wrap and turns. You like it. No reason yeah. to stop doing it. Yeah. Any other controversial opinions or just sock wearing habits? i not a hand knit sock person, but I will reveal sometimes I do sleep with socks on, which grosses Stacy out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't gross. It does not gross me out. But to, to to defend myself, it does not gross me out. My just feet, my feet would get just way too hot. So um, I don't wear socks to sleep. I wear hand knit socks. Like I said, I there's I have like some running, like a- athletic socks that I wear when I if I go running or you know I'm wearing tennis shoes or whatever. But n- I'd say ninety percent of the time, if I'm wearing socks, they're going to be ones that I've hand knit. So. Um, I wear them everywhere. I do wear them. I know you're not supposed to wear them on like by themselves on like rugs or, you know, without like slippers or whatever. But sometimes I do. I walk outside with them and even so. Wait, you're not Horrify supposed everybody. to wear them outside? On like rugs. It'll wear down. Da- well, like wearing them outside. Well, like without outside. Shoes. Which, without right. shoes. Sorry. I was not clear. But if you wear them out, don't you need to make more? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. But I don't. I. I mean, and I. I don't really get that many. Maybe because I have so many pairs of socks that I don't really. Cause I and I rotate them, rotate through them. I don't really get that many holes in my socks. So, just the usual ones, usually on on like the bottom of the foot or on the heel or something. Well, and this is more controversial. Do you darn? Because I don't darn them. I just knit a new pair. Oh, I do. If it's a, if it's a, do you throw them in a repair pile with good intentions? (laughs) They live in a repair pile. Okay. (laughs) And then I knit a new pair. (laughs) Yeah. Mine goes into a repair pile and I will, we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago on the pod about mending and I'm like, I will darn them. They don't look great, but they're in my, generally, if anyone's going to see them other than me, they're going to be in my shoes. So. No one sees that. I once yeah. heard um, uh, an older gentleman. We I was with a group of friends and we were talking about socks and darning, 
And he came up and he was like, I know how to darn socks. And we were like, oh, really? Like, that's really cool. And he was like, yeah, I look at the hole in my socks and I say, darn, and I throw them in the trash. <laughs> oh, no. Would never <laughs> no. do that to one of my hand knits. <laughs> hand knits. Yeah. Yeah, mine also go in the repair pile, and then I eventually darn them. It just <laughs> takes a while, usually. There was one time, like a year ago, when I, I ripped a pocket of a pant, like a like PJ pants or something I was wearing, and I like took them off and mended them immediately. And I was like, whoa, I don't think I've ever done that before. And I actually like <laughs> tweeted about it. I was like, uh, you know... Shout out to myself for like mending this thing immediately after it ripped, and it got like so many likes and replies because like everyone could relate to like how impressive that is because like no one ever does that. Like it's like I've literally never done that before. Um, yeah, I I only knit worsted weight socks as I said, um, or like you know DK ish. So I don't wear them that much, and also it takes a lot to wear through that heavy of a fabric. So I only wear them in like big boots, or I wear them around the house with slippers, and so. I don't have a problem with wearing holes through them yet, but I've only been doing it a couple of years, so none of my socks are that old yet. I do have some old socks that I knit in Boston that I still wear to this day that have not gotten holes in them, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed when I pull them out. And I'm like, I mean, the, the color is faded because it's been like many washes, but they're still holding up. So as 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 hard as I am on them. Do you guys do anything special with your uh sock cared like do you just chuck them in the washing machine do you make sure they dry flat i wash mine in my kitchen sink i fill it up and get some like eucalyptus or something every few weeks i'll do this fill them all up wash what i have and then i hang them on a drying rack and that's what i do every single time with wow. all my socks even if they are super wash wow yeah. Oh, it doesn't oh take goodness. very long. <laughs> I throw them in the washing machine on the delicate cycle, but then I do hang them to air dry. Yeah, I kind of have two categories. I have a stack of socks that are in like really cool yarn or just have a really nice stitch pattern that I really like. And I usually only wear those around the house, like as slippers. Um, and then I will hand wash those. And then I have another category of um ones that i will wear in boots um like in tennis shoes and those i'll put on the delicate cycle and then hang to dry i am the giant don't do any of the things that i'm about to say do what <laughs> stacy does um i again only have one pair that i have hand knit but my partner has a drawer full of hand knit socks um he only wears them in the winter and so right now is sock washing season, but I not only put them in the washer, I put them in the dryer. <gasps> I know, I know it's so bad, but he has so many that he's got to have 12 or 13 pairs. So it takes him, I, I would guess he's only probably wearing one pair twice a month. So even during the winter, they're not being washed that many times, but yeah, don't. Don't do anything that I just said. <laughs> I think my biggest worry of why I my hand wash my socks is I'm always worried. Um, I had problems early on in my knitting, not well career, I guess now, but where the soap with the soap that I used in the washer would kind of like really wreck havoc on my hand knits. I think that's always like made me paranoid. So. And when I say I, I like put them in the and I hand wash them in the sock, I mean it's not like I'm delicately hand washing each one. I just dump them all in the sink and squish through them and then put them in the washing machine and the spin cycle. So it's not like I like I said, it sounds it sounds like I'm like spending hours doing my hand knitting socks, but really <laughs> it's like even easier than putting in the washing machine for me. <laughs> Also, one of the three pairs of socks that I've made my partner, he, we were living apart for a while um, for job reasons, and he did wash a pair of socks that I knit him, and they shrunk down to toddler size. So. Oh, no! <laughs> yes. This was partly my fault, partly the yarn I was using that was listed as superwash, but was actually not superwash. And, yeah, so... He keeps bringing that up when I say that I'll knit him a sock. He's like, you knit me socks, and then they shrunk. And I'm like, well, that wasn't my fault. 
What would you recommend to knitters who are considering becoming sock knitters? Knit some socks. No. <laughs> 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 Start with where I would say use Lee's of starting with like a heavier weight. I think that is actually an easy way to do it because you can see the stitches easier. You're using like, you know, um, larger needles. It makes it easier to figure out what you're doing. And there's they you're using less stitches. So it takes a little bit. It's a little bit quicker to do. So go ahead, Lee. And I'll, I'll shout out the pattern that I've used for my last three pairs. It's actually designed for DK, but I do it with, um, Soccer and Hell Double, which is a little bit more of a worsted, so I kind of modified the size. But um, the pattern is actually for, like, ankle socks, so they're DK and they're short, so they're very good beginner, but you can modify it to add, you know, legs if you want to, which is what I do. And They're called uh, Winter Weekend Socks or Winter Weekender Socks, something like that. I think Winter Weekend Socks by Shannon Squire. And it's it's like a very versatile pattern that um, we'll link it in the show notes because it's not on nitpicks, but it's it includes a top down and a toe up version. So you can try either version. You can try one and then the other. Um, so it's, I, th- I think that's a really good beginner pattern. We also have a couple of worsted weight socks on our website. One of them maybe that Stacy designed. Is that right? <laughs> yes, I did design one. Uh, in fact, I'm actually, while I'm standing here recording this, I'm knitting a pair of Acagliande, um pair of socks. It's in worsted weight. I've done it in Chroma. I've done it in Felici worsted. And I've done it in, I've even done it in Will the Andes worsted. So, And that's uh, actually in our uh, Learn to mm-hmm. Knit Socks book, too. And if you get that book, you'll get that, that pattern, which is worsted. And then you'll get a basic pattern in sock weight. And then you'll get a more advanced pattern. So you can kind of work your way up. And the basic pattern in sock weight is also mine. <laughs> <laughs> Our in-house sock designer. <laughs> yeah, I would say um, just find a simple pattern um, and go for it. If you can knit, if you can purl, and if you uh, know the concept of going in the round, then you should give it a try because that's how I learned how to knit socks. And even though... It was a little bit of a process. Um, it was still so much fun learning those new techniques along the way. So it's a lot less complicated than you think. You just got to dive in and give it a try. And you can do it. I have faith in you. <laughs> well, and I agree with everything that everybody else has said. Um, and I think worsted weight and shorter socks are always a great idea. But my rule of thumb with trying anything new is find a yarn that you love how it feels that's in a color that you love and a pattern that inspires you. Because then when you see the project sitting on your coffee table or wherever it is that you put it down, you think, oh, I want to play with that. I want to touch that. When you do something and, and you don't like the yarn or you don't like the color, you like we often, when we learn to do something, we think, oh, I'm just going to buy this sock yarn because it's really inexpensive and it's just a trial. Except then you don't want to play with it. Treat yourself. Get something that that you love, that feels good, that the color is great. And, um, and you know, something variegated that will let the yarn do the work, and you can do a simple pattern. Mm-hmm. Or self-striping. Yeah, yeah totally. that's, that's a great tip. I also want, uh, that's, a, that's an excellent tip. I also want to say, um, if you are like a newer knitter in general, and there's like a lot you haven't done yet, um, don't be scared by like short rows, for example. Like short rows are not hard. You just do what the pattern says. Like you, short rows are one of those things where like most patterns are going to walk you through it. So you can just do what the pattern says and you don't need to think that it's this elaborate technique that you have to look at videos of or anything. Of course, there are videos if you want a visual. But the the by the time you finish your first pair of socks, you will have leveled up your knitting game, and you'll kind of learn like, oh, I there's a lot I can do. Like it's <laughs> it's, it's a cool thing to learn. Turning yeah. the heels are not is not scary. No, it's just, very easy. Just do do what the pattern <laughs> says. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, addition- but don't. I was gonna say don't read ahead because sometimes you read ahead and then you think oh, I don't understand this. Just read it as you go it will make sense trust lee when she says it will make sense it will make sense <laughs> um in addition to what jen said yarns that are classified as a sock yarn which is like slightly different from like any yarn used to knit a sock but like specifically marketed as sock yarns generally are like super sturdy yarns that you can rip back and knit over and over and over a million times and they'll hold up because they were created like 
to be stepped on. So they're very hardy <laughs> yarns. They typically have some nylon content, so they can handle whatever you throw at them as you're knitting, even if you're a newbie. Yeah, that's a great point. The very first socks I ever made were worsted, uh, swish worsted, which is not a sock yarn, and it doesn't have any nylon content, and, like, those are pretty pilly, because I didn't realize that, like, sock yarn is sock yarn for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. swish is so soft and squishy, yeah. it would totally be worth it. Yeah, I still, I I like them, and I wear them. They just, they don't last, they don't look good as long as sock yarn socks look good for, you know? So if you're going to do the worsted thing, personally, I recommend holding sock yarn held double as opposed to using an actual worsted weight yarn, just for the reasons that Andy just said. It'll it'll just be sturdier. You can rip it back more. Yeah. And what are everyone's favorite sock yarns? Hawthorne, baby. I'm all about Hawthorne. It's, my, it's been my favorite. Since we brought it out, it has been my very favorite sock yarn. I'm not saying that because I work at Nitpicks and I record a Nitpicks podcast every other <laughs> week. Um, Hawthorne's my favorite. It's my favorite sock yarn. Um, it's perfect. The colors are perfect. The, I love the um, tight twist to it. Um, it's a little bit thicker than a lot of sock yarns. So it does make thicker socks, which sometimes it's a problem when I'm wearing like <laughs> tighter shoes but i i grin and bear it because i love my hawthorne so very very much well elena i know what yours is so <laughs> go ahead <laughs> well i admit like yes i'm elena and i'm a felici hoarder <laughs> <laughs> she sure um, is <laughs> collector. it's a collection <laughs> collection okay yeah but it's funny i don't knit with them very often it's like you have to find that perfect pattern for my Felici. Um, but like I said, I knitted socks for my entire family last year. I used static and that was so much fun watching not just the striping, but also just the, all the different color changes and patterning that that happens within just a skein of static is really cool. And you don't really have to work for it. It just automatically happens. Well, I'm going to have to say Felici because that's what I've used the most now. That's uh, my go-to. But I, I've knit with either, um, well, my latest socks were Felici held double with itself. And I knit another pair with two different colors of Felici held double with each other. And I knit another pair with Felici held double with Stroll. Um, and I really like the Felici and Stroll together. That's fun. Yeah. Get a nice marled stripe. Yeah, yeah. Marl's stripe is great. I also really love Hawthorne. I've mainly knit with Hawthorne held double for sweaters or held together with a loft for sweaters. Um, I haven't really knit socks with Hawthorne. No, I did. That's not true. I knit one pair of socks with Hawthorne held double. Um, love, love Hawthorne. If I'm going to knit socks, I'm going to use Hawthorne because it is sturdier. But I'm currently obsessed with Stroll because it's so soft, but I want to make sweaters with it. <laughs> mm. I will say that when you are shopping for uh, any yarn, you kind of have a compromise between softness and strength. So, like, things that are softer will wear out a little faster than things that are sturdier and not as soft. So, last month we released Pop Socks, uh, our yay, new yay. sock collection. So, of course, I have to ask, which are your favorites? Which ones do you want to knit? Those can be two different answers. <laughs> uh, I love the tiny, I love all of them. I, we, we, Lee and I went on a big digression last week of all our favorite patterns. But one I didn't mention was the Tiny Twist Socks by Maggie McCourt. I really love those. I don't know if it's just the colors, I mean, but it's also like kind of a plain, almost a plain but fancy plain sock. So, which is what I end up uh, knitting all the time anyway. So, love them. Well, mine that I think I'm probably going to cast on real soon um, that I talked about last week was the Comfort DK socks because they're in DK weight, and I love them. That pattern is by Rennet Cam, and it's great. And But the other favorite that's just, like, kind of my favorite to, to look at that I don't plan on making because it's an actual sock yarn is the Rainbow Socks by Allison <laughs> Griffiths because rainbows. <laughs> love anything with rainbows. <laughs> And actually, Allison Griffith has an entire book on socks, so she knows what she's doing. So it's a great pattern. Mm -hmm. I love the Sunbeam Socks by Amy Kate Sutherland. Um, 
they look like polka dots, which I love. And it's slip stitch color work. So it's only one color at a time. And I love that with color work. So it looks much fancier than it actually is. Yes. Love mosaic. Yes. Um, I'm a fan of the Crosswalk Boot Socks by Moira Engel. Um, They just look so much fun with the cables going up the sides. And they're also in Swish DK, which would make them faster to work up, especially because they are knee-high. Knee-high socks can get a little bit tedious if you're in fingering or, or sock weight yarn, but I'm excited for those. I've done exactly one pair of knee highs and they were in Felici. No, I've done two, sorry. But just made me think of wow. with you. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of my one of my commuter train knitting where I'm just knitting there round and round and round. <laughs> my only pair of hand knit socks I own. I did not knit them myself. My aunt knit them for me and they are knee high um black and gray socks with a mock oh cable. <laughs> I'm just like oh. I'd have like no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's just a very intense knitter. Um, she she doesn't even like to wear hand knits, but she makes beautiful things at very fine gauge and like totally a process knitter. And they're beautiful socks, but yeah, that's intense. <laughs> I have another pair of knee highs. I I think we mentioned last week about Kristen Jenkuk's patterns, and one of hers is a baseball sock pattern that is for baseball fans like me and her and it is in fun my, for my beloved mariners colors so she did hers in her orioles colors so i did do those and that was in hawthorne so i i i, I don't wear them very often but i love them so much mm-hmm. all right well i think we're about ready to wrap up but does anyone have any last words on sock knitting that they want to throw in can I just say a thing that I noticed off mic that I thought was really fun? Um, so I only <laughs> ever knit worsted socks, never sock weight, and Stacy only ever knit sock weight socks normally. But right now, as we're talking, I'm currently <laughs> knitting a project in Felici held single on size fours. It's not socks, but uh, and Stacy is currently knitting a pair of worsted weight socks. So we we flip flopped. So <laughs> yeah. ne- never stick to your preferences. Step outside your own box. Do. <laughs> <laughs> whatever yeah i thought that i thought that was fun <laughs> yeah it is very funny that that's what ended up happening and i would like to say socks are the perfect project because one ball makes a pair and it's one and done and then you can move on to the next thing and they're amazing and you can make the same pair over and over and over again and people are happy to have them and you're happy to make them and everyone should make socks just my yeah, opinion. really. Socks are the only thing that I uh, use the same basic, simple pattern for over and over, and I never get sick of it because the yarn is always different. With like hats or sweaters or anything else, I'm I always want to try a new pattern that I've never used before. But socks is like just I just want the yarn. Like I, the fun of it is picking out the yarn and then like seeing how the yarn knits up. Yeah, and I think one of the best things about socks, it's like a low cost investment. If you want to go to the, if you go to a yarn store or a fiber show, and you want to try this uh, Dyer's amazing work, one Hank, 100 gram Hank is going to make a pair of socks, instead of buying like, you know, five hanks to make a sweater in it to try it out and because you love the color so and going back to jen said they're great gifts for people um everybody you know is always pestering knitters for gifts in their work um but socks are generally a crowd pleaser i don't think i've met anybody who was upset getting a pair of hand work hand knitted socks for a gift mm-hmm. agreed yeah and even though we've all said that we love to make the same pattern over and over, they're a great way to try a new technique yeah. because it's fast. And if you don't like it, it's done. They're perfect. It's the perfect project. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And if you make a mistake, well, they're going to be, it's going to be hidden behind your, your pants or your Ooh. shoes or. That's another exactly. reason to knit toe up. If you're trying a new stitch pattern you've never done before and you go toe up, then by the time you make it all the way up to the part people are actually going to see, you've kind of gotten used to it and you've you've worked out the kinks. But yeah. Great tip. Smart. <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> well, hopefully we've convinced you to try socks. 
if you haven't yet or just given you more sock ideas to try that you might not have done already if you're already a sock knitter. Um, thank you to Elena and Jen for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This podcast was originally created by Kelly Petkin. It is produced and hosted by me, Lee Meredith, and Stacey Winkleback. Produced by Andy Satterland with additional production and editing by Chase Ryan. Special thanks to Jen Burt and Elena Ruman for joining us today. We recorded this episode in the Pacific Northwest where we're all knitting our socks to keep our toes cozy. From everyone here at Knit Picks, thank you for joining us. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual participants. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions or views of the Crafts Group LLC or Premier Needle Arts. All the yarn, tools, and patterns mentioned in this episode, along with all the inspiration an knitter could need, can be found on our website at knitpicks.com. If you'd like to be on our podcast, leave us a voicemail. We'll be checking it regularly and using your calls in later episodes. To leave a voicemail, call 360-334-4847 and record your message. You can also record a voice memo on your phone and email us that audio file at podcast at nitpicks.com. Like and follow us on your favorite social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube at Nitpix. Rate and review us wherever you listen to this podcast. Until next time, happy crafting! We recorded this episode in the Pacific Northwest, where we're all knitting our socks to keep our toes to... <laughs> Co's tozy. <sighs> <sighs> Never fails. <laughs>